everyone. Welcome to Court Time with Karina Mustafa. And before we get into today's show, I do want to mention that first and foremost, Brittany Griner is home. She arrived just this morning. So we are very, very relieved that she's Definitely. finally been relieved finally. from the Russian prison. Um, we're going to continue to give her the privacy and space that she deserves. And we hope that she takes the time to get right and get to be herself I'm again. Glad she's back. Yeah, I'm yeah. Glad. Very good news. All right. So joining me on today's show is Jelani Goodridge Reed. Last time you get you came here, the Blazers were in first place in the Western they were, Conference. They um, they're not anymore. But yeah, and they lost. You know, last night to uh, Jamal Murray's heroics in the end. So it is what it is. It's early. Yeah. So sort of. we're gonna get into NBA teams that have surprised us in, in a good way so far. Yeah. Um, we'll start with the East. Jelani, what's your pick for a team that you've been happy with? I'm really liking the Pacers right now. If you look at the conference, I think that's the one team that people are kind of surprised mm -hmm. uh, you know, about because the preseason predictions, no one had the Pacers doing anything. Let's be honest, right? They're a younger team, but you're looking at Tyrese Halliburton. This is a guy that can make the case for an all-star starter. He's probably not going to be a starter just because it's a popularity contest. We know that. But he's come in, you know, since he's been a Pacer, he's been impressive, okay? Right now, he's a 2010 type of, type of guy. When you're looking at how he's, you know, made his other guys better, right? His assist numbers are fantastic. He had a stretch where it was like 40 assists with no turnovers, okay? Wow. You don't see that every day. You do not see that every day. This is a guy that I'm very impressed with. And that trade with the Kings, mm -hmm. I was like, man, the Kings are going to lose a guy that's going to keep getting better and better. And we're seeing that right now with Tyrese Halliburton. And then when you're talking about, you know, aside from him, you're looking at two Canadians, okay? I have to I give knew, the shout I, out to I my knew, country, I knew Canada, <laughs> okay? Andrew Nemhard. let me start with him, okay? He's somebody that, you know, went under the radar in the draft. He went to uh, Gonzaga, of course, it was 31 overall. You know, so he, he was a second round pick. I thought he was, should have been a first rounder, but he's come in and he's done a pretty good job. He's moving up the rookie ranks, right? You saw what he did against the Warriors. He had 30 plus. You saw what he did against the Lakers, had the game winning bucket. So he's feeling better, you know, and he's playing better now. He's gotten confidence and I'm liking what I'm seeing from Andrew Nemhard. And then, of course, Benedict Matherin. This is a guy right now who's second in scoring in terms of rookies and actually total points. He's leading the league in total points for, for rookies, actually, uh, right now over Paolo Bencaro. So I'm impressed with him. And I, I actually had, like everyone has their, you know, preseason bold prediction, right? I thought it was more likely that, that we see a Canadian win I remember that. I the remember rookie that. of the year mm -hmm. than one of the top five picks. So I was looking at Benedict Matherin or uh, Shaden Sharp from, from the Portland Trailblazers. But right now, Matherin's making me look pretty good. Uh, you're looking at what he's done. But, yeah, this is a team that I expect to play better down the stretch, but can they hold up? Mm -hmm. That's the one question, right? Can they hold up? They're younger than other teams in the East, obviously. Uh, I do believe in the coaching there that they have in Indy, you know, with Carlisle, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with them. I, I'm just impressed with them so far. They're 13 and 12. And, you know, like I said, can they keep it up? Because there's like seven to eight teams that are stacked in the Eastern Conference that are mm -hmm. sitting at that record at 500. But yeah, the pace is for me in the East. Yeah, it's been kind of nice to see them get back to being more consistent like they were in the, yeah. you know, in the Victor Oladipo era of the Pacers. Yeah, and Paul so, George and all that stuff. Exactly. You know, so. so, yeah, that's nice for sure. My team in the East, it's a little bit more predictable. You did take my Pacers when we were, uh, yeah, when we were yeah, talking show notes, <laughs> but the Cleveland Cavaliers, yes, I mean, really well. they might be one of the most exciting teams in the NBA yeah. right now. I yeah. mean, you talk about getting Darius Garland already in the draft, Evan Mobley in the draft. Like, those two yeah. have been really 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 impressive cool. yeah impressive pieces and then trading for mr donovan mitchell this summer mm. was like the cherry on top huge move the piece to the puzzle that yep. they needed yep. and it, they're just so fun i always like to call them like the trees like the Jarrett, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah evan I mean, mobley and like, they have robin lopez as well yeah um their defense is good their offense is good they're third in the east right now and i think yeah. they're probably one of the more consistent teams in the eastern conference are, because everybody's yeah. kind of close right now but this is a team that i think would stand out to me as long as they remain healthy. Yeah. I think they're one of the They have a good coaching teams. with uh, Bickerstaff, too. He's exactly. making the case right now for Coach of the Year. This is random, but, like, after every game, he sounds like he has no voice. Like, he's just been yelling. <laughs> yeah, he and lost, I he used loses his voice immediately, right? I, I used to think that he, like, loses his voice, but I think that's just what his voice that's, sounds who else, like. Doc Rivers, too. You can, yeah, you can say yeah. that about him, too. It's kind of funny, you know? <laughs> but it's good. That means, that means he's very vocal he with is. his team, and, and I think that's very, very important. 
The Cleveland Cavaliers, their ceiling, yeah. maybe. Yeah, what are you making... thinking? What are you thinking? Second round of the playoffs. That's fair. Yeah. Because I don't see them as a conference final team yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them in the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen this, this group in the playoffs. I haven't seen Garland, Mobley, all these guys. So we'll see. And they're younger than other teams in the East, you know, similar to the Pacers, a younger team. So, yeah, I'd say second round because they like do have a lot of talent. Seven. I feel yeah. like they're going to go down in seven in the second round of the playoffs. It's just like a gut feeling. It's possible, you know? And it, it depends on matchups. Yeah, that's true. Of course. So let's say if they play Atlanta, what do you think? Okay, I think they could or beat like, Atlanta. Or like a, I don't know, Philly. I think they could beat Philly. Too. Yeah? <laughs> or Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, that's why I think, yeah, I think they could make, um, you know, first round, they'll mm -hmm. win that. But yeah, once it gets a bit tougher, yeah, the Milwaukee's, like the yeah, yeah, the yeah, Boston's, yeah. that's where it gets a bit dicey. But no, they're a good team to me. For sure. Um, and they're very complete on defense. Like, yeah. they're communicating well, they're rotating well. And I think that's one of the biggest things for them right now, just main like holding their opponents um, throughout different games. But let's move on to the Western Conference. Mm. Light the beam, Jelani. Look, these are my favorite, the three favorite words in the sport right now. <laughs> Light the beam, okay? I, I get it. The Kings are not, you know, the sexiest franchise in the NBA, okay? They, they, coming into the year, no one said the Kings were going to do anything. I actually did think, though, they, they have the talent. So I did predict that they make the play-in as a 10th seed, but they're playing way better than that right now. Um, and I understand it's the Kings. You know, this is a franchise that's really struggled for years and years. The last time they were good, Timberlake dropped sexy back. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? Oh um, so it's it's been a minute. It's been a minute for Sacktown, but we're seeing a new culture. And who's that? That's Mike Brown. Mike Brown, right now, you can make a strong case for Coach of the Year. I know that, you know, there's other guys up for that honor right now, but Mike Brown's doing a great job. He's brought the culture there, okay? He's made huge adjust, adjustments when needed. And I just find that he's actually getting something out of the talent. That's the problem with the Kings. Over the years, they've had talent. They've had young talent come in the door. They've had veteran talent as well. But these coaches from the past, they haven't been able to get the most out of those guys. I'm seeing that with Mike Brown right now. Okay, offensively, if you talk about the Sacramento Kings, these guys can score at will. They are second in scoring right now. They're right with Boston. Okay, they actually had the record for offensive rating in the first 15 games of a regular season. So that was impressive to me. And then when you're seeing the defensive side of the ball, you know, a guy like Sabonis, he's having his best, you know, year in terms of his defense mm -hmm. uh, and what he's doing on that side of the floor. That's Mike Brown. That's what he's been installing. And I actually think the Warriors miss him. The Warriors really miss him in terms of their defense, right, R right now. So I'm looking at Mike Brown. And then obviously you have the two All-Stars. I think these are two All-Stars, Sabonis and Fox. Mm -hmm. Sabonis is a guy who... I will always say this. I wanted him to be a Raptor um, when he when he was drafted. I I felt like we made a mistake, but that's okay. That's beside the point. Um, but he he's always it, a, a wannabe Raptor. I sure. look. I, this guy is he's under the radar. Always on the radar. Savonis has always been good. Okay. I know he's not his dad, but he, he's fantastic. And he's a 17 point per game scorer right now. And he's leading the team in rebounding and assisting. So he's not just scoring. He's doing a lot on the floor. And when you're talking about the better bigs in the West, you could put him in that, that, that category. And then as for Fox, Fox, I mean, he's leading them in scoring. He's a 26 point per game scorer, you know, f through the first 15 games of the season. His numbers did drop like over the last stretch of, you know, games, like around 10 games, he's, he's dropped to like 17 ish. So yeah, you know, some lapses in play, but it, it happens. It happens, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's been dealing with a, a foot bruise, you know, uh, over the course of the last month. So he's still putting the team on his back despite that that uh, you know potential ailment. But yeah, no, the Kings the Kings are impressive to me. I, I'm looking at that offense. The offense is lethal right mm -hmm. now, and I think people really need to look at the Kings and say these aren't the Kings from before. These are not the Kings from before, and and they they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. So uh, moving on to my Western Conference team, you think we'll see a Kings uh, Pelicans Western Conference Whoa, final? Whoa, I, I can't even imagine that. I, I'm gonna be <laughs> real. That would be crazy. But the Pelicans are balling right now. Yeah, they are. they are. And I think they got, like, they have, like, sneaky depth. Like, they're they do. first they're, they're, in the Western deep. Conference right now, yep. which is huge. I mean, there was a couple games there where CJ McCollum was not playing, and they still yeah. did pretty well without him. They destroyed the Pacers lot, like a few weeks ago. Like My team from the East, yeah. They just, yeah. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> and, you know, last time you were on, like I mentioned before, the Blazers are first. Now the Pelicans are first in the Western Conference. Yep. To me, it's also going to be a matter of how long can they keep this up because I looked at their up 
upcoming schedule, and it is a little bit tough. They yeah, they do play some real some contenders, sons, right? Like they have a lot of. We'll like, see. It. We'll see who they really are now. We'll see who they really are. That's true, and you know, having Zion back and like actually yeah. playing healthy is huge, huge for them. Like you can. I'm glad he's. Talent. I'm glad he's healthy. I'm glad he's playing because mm-hmm. he, he's had the talent. We just want him on the court, right? One hundred percent. So, do you think they could? make the western conference finals or is that just like a um, wishful thinking to me it's a bit far it's a yeah. bit because the west i mean the west though there's so much parody this year i don't even know who's coming out of the west i'm gonna be honest my prediction was the warriors yeah. but i'm not sure okay the pelicans they have the talent to do it really green really good coach up for coach of the year as well um but let's see how they look in the playoffs right they they have a lot of younger guys on that team yes they have some vets you know that you can rely on cj jv who i miss in toronto as well but I think that the young guys, yeah, Yeah. the pump fake, man, he always got people with that. He always did. Okay. But I'm looking, I'm looking at Zion, these younger guys, how will Brandon Ingram look in the playoffs? Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, matchups, matchups matter. So I would say to me right now, ceiling second round, similar to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fair. I like that. So those are the teams that we are excited about right now. We'll see how the next couple of weeks shake out for them. Let's move on to some tennis. Okay, okay. And a very fun, this or that, would you rather sort of situation. Okay, Jelani, some of these are maybe a little bit tough. All but, right, but all right. But they're fun, they're fun. All right, first one, this or that, Rafa Nadal or Roger Federer? Oh, man. Well, And, of I, course, I included this photo. Yeah. This, I'm kind of the worst. This is a tearjerker for sure. <laughs> um, when that happened, I respect Roger Federer. That's, that's definitely the guy that got me into tennis because, you know, watching my dad, we watch all his matches and stuff like that. But I got to go with my guy. I got to go with my GOAT. My GOAT is Rafael Nadal. Um, I, I believe he's the best to ever play this sport. Um, and, and you look at the numbers, okay, the 22, right, to 20, right? I, I, I think that is just the dominance, I think, of the French that Rafa look you got you got to point that out he Play King. Play King. there's nobody that to me you know on the men's side that has dominated one tournament than you know Rafa and the French mm-hmm. so you're looking at that aspect I think that plays a role in this but you know Roger to me you know I respect him so much but it's a tough one it's a tough one I gotta go with Rafa though <sighs> I, I know, it. this one's tough. I'm like, can I have both of them? I know, I know. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a hard question because th- these are obviously two goats, right? And then if you want to throw in Djokovic. But, uh, yeah, for me, for me, I got to... I, I, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know your, your take on Djokovic. But, yeah, I got to go with Rafa. Rafa's definitely... And he's still, he's still playing well. You know, I know he's getting older. So he's not the same Rafa, of course. But he's still out there and he's still making noise. Yeah, that's tough. I, oh my God, I love both of these to death, but I'm going to inch Roger just mm. because of his style of tennis. I totally okay. get, like, dominating on clay for Rafa is an yeah. incredible accomplishment. But I think Roger Federer's, like, style of play, he's so it's graceful. It, yes, the yes. backhand, like, it just, it made me fall in love with tennis really, like, a lot. Right. And I just, I really love his style of play. So I'm going to go Roger. Okay. Also a little bit just to go against you. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. It is, what it is. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Next one. Wimbledon or Roland Garros? Mm. I mean, Wimbledon, you know, that's that's where you want to be, right? But Roland Garros, I mean. You just my, talked about I Rafa did. I just clay. talked about my goat, mm-hmm. right? On clay. I, I love watching it because he wins every time. But I will say Wimbledon. I okay. think Wimbledon is, you know, it's where it's at, you know, in terms of tennis. That's the most prestigious honor. If you win Wimbledon, everyone's there. Everyone shows up and they're all white, you know, fits. So I, I got to go with Wimbledon. If you're talking about the biggest events in sports, Wimbledon definitely in terms of tennis, when you're talking tennis, that's where you want to be. So I have to go with Wimbledon. All right. I mean, not to go against you again, but I oh, think going I'm, going, eh? I'm going Rolling Garros, okay. but that's because I really love clay courts. Like, I enjoy yeah. it a little bit better than grass. I, I think. like grass. I think I think that's also why I picked it. I, mm-hmm. I prefer grass than clay, but I prefer watching Rafa win and dominate <laughs> on clay than, <laughs> than grass, okay, obviously. Okay. But... See, it's chestnut checker. Yeah. <laughs> so you go Wimbledon. I go uh, Rolling Garros. The next one are the other two Grand Slams. They're both hard courts, so this yeah. one might be a little bit harder. U.S. Open or mm. Australian Open? I've always liked U.S. Open. Hmm. That's actually my favorite tournament to watch uh, overall, mm-hmm. so I have to go with that. Australian Open is, is fun to watch for sure, no doubt about it. And it's a, it's a fantastic tournament, how they do it every year. I love it, but 
U.S. Open. You're talking about Arthur Ashe Stadium, where I want to go. I, that's one of my dreams. Bucket list for sure. Summer 2020. I, I, I will be there. I will be in New York at some point watching uh, some, some great tennis. But yeah, I, I'd have to go with U.S. Open. That's my favorite tournament in tennis. I actually agree with you. And There we go. And I'll, tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you why. I really like the vibes of the Australian Open because it's at the beginning of the year. It's a fresh start. There's like that exciting element to it. But the U.S. Open attracts so much attention, maybe because it is in the U.S. There's You see so many celebrities going, yep. like basketball players, like yeah, artists. Just, yeah. The vibes are so and the, the lights, fun. the lights are shining, you know, at night, you know, I just like it. I just mm -hmm. like it a lot. And, and we've seen great moments as well, you know, so I, I'd have to go with the U.S. Open. Okay, I agree. I agree. And speaking of great moments, we saw Serena retire there did. this year. She did. That hurts. So my next question is. Would you rather see Serena Williams or Roger Federer come out of retirement? Oh, wow. That's a tough question. <laughs> That's a he tough question. He did not question. know that was coming. I did not know that was coming. Wow. Because Roger, like, I, I've always wanted to play forever, right? Same with Serena, right? So, mm -hmm. I'd have to say Serena. Serena? I'd have to say Serena because of her dominance on the sport. She's, to me, Mount Rushmore athlete. Um, not just women's sports, but in general. Because you've seen, you're seeing what she did for tennis, not just for the women's side, but you know, you're looking at the racial component as well, mm -hmm. right? This was a sport that, you know, people that look like me couldn't really get, you know, the access to it, couldn't really dominate, couldn't even play. So now you're seeing what Serena's done, obviously, with her sister Venus, and you, they've changed the game, right? You're seeing Felix now, you're seeing all these, you know, TFL, Coco Goff. Yeah, Coco Goff. So yeah, there's so many components to it uh, that you know are even outside of the court itself and and serena i mean no one can beat her right mm -hmm. I, I loved watching her win yeah. time after time tournament after tournament so serena for sure yeah i know for me it's such like a it's tough it's tough because i love fed i i do i really yeah. do i know? think i was really devastated i really wish so i watched the wimbledon final that roger played against novak back in 2019 yeah he had two championship points and he still lost to novak and so i think if he had won that wimbledon i would have felt a lot better about yeah. his retirement but that still like remains like yeah, that was a classic too that was a classic I wish, I wish he got that done but I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't It's my show. My question is, is I'm not show. answering this, this one. Is show. <laughs> okay, moving on to the last one, which we mm. kind of alluded to earlier, but out of all the courts, grass, clay, and hard court, which one's the best one or your favorite one in your opinion? Favorite one? We already uh, established grass yeah, over clay yeah, for you. Yeah, so grass over clay, but I say court over grass. Hard court over grass. Yeah, I love hard court. I like, you know, when I played, you know, not, I look, I'm not, I'm not, Felix, I'm not these guys out here, okay? Shout out to <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when I play for fun, okay, on the hard court, I like it. It makes me move faster and stuff like that. But uh, watching, the, like I said, my favorite tournament, tournament excuse me, um, US Open, right? So I'd have to go with that. I have, you know, a little bias in this. Uh, so yeah, court, hard court for sure. I alluded to it earlier as well, but I, I'm going, going to go clay. Clay. Okay. I like how it's easy to slide on, like the ball bounces in a different way. It's it's just, for me, it's really enjoyable to watch. I really yeah. like hardcore. Hardcore is like a really close second. What about so, grass? How do you feel about grass? I like how it looks. Like I like the green. Yeah. In terms of how the ball bounces, it's a, it feels it, like it's a little it's bit different. harder yeah. for players to play on it. Um, so that kind of takes away some of that element for me, but Overall, I don't mind it. I just really like tennis in general. So I'm, okay with whatever court. I'm okay with whatever court they play yeah. on, but for me, it'll be clay. For me, catch court. me on the hard yeah. court. I'm different. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned because the next thing is going to be the next show for court time is going to be Karina Ooh. versus Jelani Let's go. <laughs> on the hard court. Um, stay tuned for that. That'll, that would be an interesting yeah, Take uh, me on the money line. Do. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining no problem, me no today. Uh, I'll make sure you're following Jelani on socials. With Make sure you catch his shows with Justin Cooney, the J Unit, and J -Unit. their new mugs, courtesy of me. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> Fantastic gift by Karina, obviously. No problem. Thank you. And join us next time on Court Time with Karina Mustafa.